Hi everyone. Brian's already smiling. I can only imagine what he's going to say. I got nothing bad to say today, everybody. Brian. I'm a saint. Brian is at our Fitness for 10 studio in Carson City, and we have Krista, Coach Krista, uh, personal training director at our Fitness for 10 in Sparks. She's also in our studio there. So thanks for being with us, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about overtraining. And Brian, why don't you go first? Because you talked about there's some people that just get addicted to exercise and they can't stop. You know, they get those endorphins going and they just, they do too much and it gets all out of control. So go ahead, you first. Well, I think it's important. You know, I've done this to myself. I've overtrained before in the past and I started developing injuries and, and stuff that just wouldn't go away. Uh, I think it's important when you're when you're doing a program for yourself for the betterment of your lifestyle, if you will, that you truly pay attention to your body. The body's not designed to do four and five intense workouts a day. And we all know people in this business, uh, whether it be the people we work with sometimes, clients, friends of ours, that they have no problem you know, going to the gym, working out with their coaches or their friends, hitting it hard, then going to another gym and doing a different program and doing two, three, and sometimes even more programs a day. And then let's throw in a, you know, a four mile run. You have got to pay attention to your body. We are not, you know, a machine. We're not robots. And when you continually do that, first off, you're probably going to start dehydrating your body. So it's not going to operate efficiently. And when you do that to yourself, you stand a chance of getting hurt. The body's going to break down at some point. And we, we ignore uh, warning signs. You know, my knees are aching. My, my shoulders are hurt. My elbows are hurt. This is something different. It won't go away. It's become, you know, it's starting to become almost chronic in nature. What do I do? And when we talk to these people, sometimes they'll back off because we'll say, well, you got to back out of what you're doing. Let's, let's adjust this. Let's bring it down. Let's get 45 good minutes in a day. Let's pass on some of these other things, maybe spread it out through the week. And it's very, very, very hard for them to comprehend, maybe not comprehend, but to accept the fact that less is okay. I think it is a very common situation for a lot of people that are, are gym rats, if you will. I've done it to myself. I'm sure you guys have. But it's something we do need to remind people. Be very, very careful about how much workout, working out you do, the constant intensity levels. It can't always be at 1,000%. I've tried it. It doesn't work. You guys, what do you think? Yeah, you know, Krista, um, what do you – do you have any experience with overtraining for yourself personally? I do. What I absolutely what do. Um, so yeah, I mean, even through the process of losing all the weight and everything else, you know, I'm in the gym, I'm going hard, I'm going hard. And you know, my hip starts bothering me and I'm like, Oh, it's fine. It's fine. And you keep going, you keep going. And then all of a sudden it's like, okay, I can't move. I am literally dragging my foot because my hip is so locked up that I can't move. This is a problem. And then you have to reset, right? Because now we actually have forced ourselves into a position where we're injured. And now our body has said, okay, that's it. You were in timeout, timeout. And now you, you set yourself back because now you have to focus on the recovery of something that could have been prevented to start with. Like Brian said, had you been listening to your body? You know, it's, it's about getting it just right. And I know um, and we got to talk, we got to talk about this, you know, you and me on just how did you do that, you know, <clears throat> on, on our own little podcast or whatever, but, um, you, you start to get some momentum and you want more and you want more and you start to get greedy and then you injure yourself. Right. So you got to get it just right. Look, I was always a skinny little kid <clears throat> and if more was better, I'd win. I, I'd win at everything if more was better because I worked hard. I did, I did more than everybody else and I put more into it. But that's not the most effective way to do it. you got to get it just right. Some people are just going through the motions and they don't really like what they're doing. So they're trying to get away with the minimum amount. They're probably not doing enough. But you have to get away from that 
more is better? Because sometimes it's not. And as we go here, I'll, I'll tell you more about what I do. Cause I do, I like to work out a lot, but you know, I don't lift for more than an hour, 45 minutes or an hour. But <clears throat> we were talking about before we got on camera about some of the things I do. So, um, what do you do, Brian, to make sure you don't overtrain? Body maintenance. Um, when, uh, and what I mean by that is I do set time limits for my workouts because I know myself and I stick to it. I know that if I see guys doing things, then I'm going to want to try it. Like when I'm training with the guys here at the gym, like, Hey, I can put another half hour in. No, you will not. But what I mean by body maintenance, I know this is going to sound silly, but I don't like to stretch myself. So I pay somebody to stretch me. I pay somebody to massage my body. I make sure that I do warm ups and, and I cool my body down. I make sure that I pay attention. I'm all over my vitamins and my hydration. So I'm not dehydrated in the uh, gym. I know what my heart rate is. I know what my, you know, my, my breathing rate should be. I know what I'm supposed to be dealing with in my body to maintain it. So because I do all these extra things and I've changed my programs to get what I need to get in for me, that's how I manage not having big injuries. Now, when I, when I wasn't doing this, I had chronic right shoulder, chronic left shoulder on days that I couldn't move. I didn't know what a life without pain was there for quite some time, more in the powerlifting era, if you will. It's not good for you. Now, you know, and if you do that and you start causing these problems to your body and you're not getting your proper recovery, taking, um, you know, breaks throughout your year from, from the intensity levels of your training, if you're not managing your body outside of the gym, uh, specifically to your exercise, then I think you're setting yourself up for failure, especially if you tend to push yourself. So for me, it's all about body maintenance, not just the workout itself. So Krista, what do you do to stay in that right zone? I love what Brian's saying. It really is. I think our health has to be looked at as a holistic thing. It's an overall thing. Yes, we can come into the gym, we can lift up heavy things, <laughs> we can put them back down. But yeah. at the end of the day, it is it is an all or nothing kind of thing as far as you have to find that balance for yourself. You have to have active recovery, right? For those who become addicted to, well, I got to go to the gym, I got to go to the gym, I got to, we have to have active recovery. So yeah, you don't go to the gym, you go for a bike ride with your family instead guess what? You're still being active. You're still putting in an effort, but you're giving your body that time to recover because that's where we cause those injuries. Taking the vitamins, doing the massage work, doing the soft tissue work, right? Like I said, I have problems with my hip because I was pushing too hard. And so now I have to go in and I do sound therapy on my hip. I do all these things because yes, you have to figure out that balance, but you have to figure out that balance for you as well. That's what the whole process comes down to. And I always told myself, I'm client number one. Everything I do, it's data in, data out. Okay, so I trained for six days with the intensity level of a 10, and now I can't walk. Okay, that's data. How am I going to process that, and what changes can I make to compromise and to come up with a plan where it's actually going to work in the long term? Because I know I see a lot of clients now who are 60, 70, 80. We've had our shoulders rebuilt. We've had back surgeries. We've had all of these things done. And now we're getting into that, that place in life where it's a longevity game. This is long term. This isn't we're going to the gym for six months and then we're done. This is a whole lifestyle that we're creating. Yeah, 60s, 70s, 80s. You look great for 80s. I'm trying. I'm trying. Let me tell you about my supplements now. <laughs> Yeah, you, you look good, girl. You look good, girl. You, you must have some special cream yeah, or something. A little this, a little that, nip tuck you. So you, you used a really effective word, active recovery. And hey, yes. if you guys are in Sparks, man, go hire her right now or one of her trainers. If you're in Sparks, get down there and hire her. She's smart. So um, what? And I just implemented that. Last week, not this week, but last week, you know, I was, you know, hitting it hard for me. And I was, I was deadlifting 200 pounds. I was repping it. Now, Brian warms up with 300. 
but I was repping 200 pounds, you know, and I did three, four sets of 10. And when I got done, it's like, uh, that doesn't feel right. So experience, you know, training for 40 years, I knew that, okay, something, it didn't feel right. When I, I, I pushed it too far, I was having fun, pushed it, but it was, it was too much for that day. So I, I had scheduled to do deadlifts on Wednesday. It was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now that's way more days that anyone would normally do deadlifts, but my intensity level is not really high. You guys know, if you're watching the channel, my intensity level is lower. I want to do more with a lower intensity level. I never train to failure. I don't do that. Brian does. I always tell him, be careful, but I don't train to failure. If you're going to train to failure and you're older, train to failure at 12 reps or 15 reps. Okay. So it's 13. I can't do it. That's different than training to failure at three or four reps. It's a much heavier load on your body. So what I did was I skipped the deadlifts that I was going to do on Wednesday and Friday I came back and did them, but I just did active recovery. I put a really light weight on the bar and just went through the motions and kind of stretched it out and copied the movement without a lot of weight. I don't use a lot of weight with anything anymore, but it was a lot lighter than the 200 pounds and I just did a few sets and by then I was scheduled to do deadlifts the following Tuesday and Thursday because that's how I do it. I alternate. And so by Tuesday, I was ready to go with a, with a normal load. So you have to be in touch with your body. You got to be in tune with your body. And that's a big deal. And that's what you guys are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I, I, I talk about and try to do myself. And active recovery is a good way to describe it, like Kristen was saying. And well, let's use the deadlift as the example. My workout today consisted of just a small kettlebell going through deadlift motions and hip hinge movements just to get it back going. Uh, my, uh, and I did more of a total body assignment today, but I used nothing, but I was still on machines, but I was using extremely lightweight and going through the motion just to get things moving. Had nothing to do with trying to get to failure today. But I do agree, and it's something that we had talked about earlier, and I don't know how much we talked about it during this last session, but with age, you have got to be cautious as you're getting older. Because if your body doesn't have, like, premium bone density or, or you're, you have a weakened skeletal system of some, of some kind, you've got to be very cautious of this when you are training to any kind of failure in anything because of the injuries that can occur if your body is not accustomed to those stressors being put upon it. And I think that's something important to really think about. Any last words, Krista? No, I absolutely agree with that. And, you know, I think we keep saying, you know, you need to check in with your body. You need to understand how your body is feeling. And to be honest, that starts when you first start at the gym, you know, when you start making those movements, okay, I'm doing a bicep curl. I need to connect my mind to that muscle. What am I doing? Where am I feeling it? And that's how you start to build that confidence in that training process and that protocol as far as am I overtraining? Am I undertraining? And then figuring out that intensity level to where it is sustainable and healthy and something you can adapt with. Great points. All right, Brian. So let's say everybody listening wants to follow you on TikTok. How do they do it? They don't because I'm not on it. <laughs> but right. They can follow Coach Krista. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go to at it's Coach Krista. How do they follow you on social media? My main place is Instagram, and that's my handle on all my social medias is at It's Coach Krista. So you can find me on TikTok. I don't post very often. I'm kind of with Brian on that one, but Instagram's my jam. All right, everybody. Thanks for being with us, and we will see you next time. Peace.